Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Satoshi Sean. Glad you're here. Glad to be hanging out with you. Uh, today we have a special person on, Alina Hakina from uh, Coda uh, Crypto Marketing um, Agency. She is the COO. Co. Um, we're gonna be talking about stable coins. Um, kind of a broad talk about stable coins to just like the basics for people that don't know what they are, and then some of the more juicy stuff. I think. Um, as far as uh, uh, the, the, the threat that they actually pose um, to the legacy financial system and then also uh, the different different ones that are out there. Um, welcome, Alina. It's good to have you on. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Such a pleasure. Well, let me uh, tell us a little bit about yourself first before we get started and, and what you do and how you got into uh, blockchain and crypto. Uh, yeah, well, I'm kind of doing everything and I have a, a position of an operations officer, but I'm kind of kind of everywhere in the company and uh, helping our team, helping our clients, uh, developing different divisions and also just like making sure that the company is on the right track. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's that's the main thing. <laughs> doing everything at stuff. once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as for uh, blockchain, I'd love to say that there was this uh, calling for me to like join blockchain, but I'm going to say that it was a complete accident. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Uh, but yeah, thank God that I um, actually joined this team and I'm super grateful because it's been amazing and I love our industry and I love what we're doing. Um, it's a great, great industry to be in. I would recommend everyone to join. <laughs> awesome. Not as bad as mine. I actually got into crypto like in the very, very beginning. And I was like, this mm. is weird. And I got, I just, like, I, I got, cause I, I got into Bitcoin just because I wanted to buy something with it. And my kid told me about it. And then I had to go through all these hoops to buy some. This is back when it was like a dollar. It was, oh. yeah, Bitcoin was like a buck. And I, I, uh, I was like, that was, that was not fun. This is dumb. I was like, I'm not going through that again. <laughs> and I, I think there was like, 12 or 15 Bitcoin on my old computer that I threw away. So, oh, wow. Yeah. It's oh, no. not as bad as the Bitcoin pizza, but it is, it's pretty bad. Yeah, but the Bitcoin pizza is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's Just imagine that. Let's, uh, let's start talking about old stable coins. Um, why don't you just explain like what stable coins are um, and uh, what they, uh, the main purpose of them are? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, the whole purpose of stable coins, as it speaks from its name, is to make sure that they are, your assets are actually stable, that the crypto market is really volatile, so you don't really know what's going to happen to your assets. You might wake up in the morning and the market is just crushing or actually going up and you never know which direction it's going to take. So for that purpose, uh, we actually came up with this uh, great idea, stable coins. And uh, actually, you can just uh, simply like divide them in the two categories. Uh, they could be either centralized or decentralized. And that kind of like, if you want to like ask yourself, like what kind of stable coins should I get? You should really answer the question of, do you want someone to have power over your assets or do you want to just control it by yourself? Uh, but with that comes the great risk of, um, you know, you can never know if the project is a total scam. Uh, so we all know, unfortunately, what happened to Luna and uh, they had their own stable coin. Uh, and unfortunately, so many people lost their money and that um, that project was not heavily regulated. Uh, and that's why all the people lost their money eventually. So if you're really concerned about that, you should go for the centralized uh, stable coins that have regulations and they have all of the papers, all the audits. Um, yeah, pretty much. And you said something, we had this great idea for stable coins. A lot of people in the industry, they don't think it's a great idea. I think it's a step backwards because we're trying to get away from pegging money to that valuation. But... Yeah. But and that's that's the thing. A lot of people that I talk to in the industry, <clears throat> you know, they're really they're really smart and they're really really savvy. But they're super they're super tech smart and they're very. Uh, I mean, they're dreamers. Um, and the reality is, 
that if you have a coffee shop and three employees, you can't risk taking Bitcoin or taking any 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 uh, currency that could go down 10% by the end of the day. <clears throat> you have people depending on you, um, you know, to make their to make their uh, their salaries. You have your own family to take, you know, to worry about. You have to know that when you take three dollars for that cup of coffee, that it's still you still have three dollars at the end of the day because your profit margin is very small. Um, yeah. So you wouldn't make. Sometimes you wouldn't make money, and you could actually have lost money on on making a sale. Um, so it, it really we couldn't have adoption without something that was more stable. Um, and there is an argument for an instantaneous, uh, you know, cash out you pay in Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever, and, and instantly, you know, switches over to, to us dollars and puts it in your bank account. Um, but I think, I think that stable coins are an important thing. Then you have the whole argument with centralization versus decentralization. And it just gets back to human uh, um, human greed and, and human evil because mm -hmm. you then you have basically scams versus not scams. And right. even if your, your your intentions are all good and altruistic, you could create something that is a you know you think's a really good pro you know product, and there's still going to be other people that want to exploit it. And mm -hmm. from the outside, try and mess it up. So it, it's a, it is, it is a lot more complex and nuanced than just, hey, you know, we have this, you know, take this currency instead of U.S. dollars. Um, but it's, it's an evolution, and we're at the beginning of it. Um, no, for sure, yes. What do you think about uh, stable coins that are linked to a single asset like, like dollars or? Um, stable coins are linked to a basket of assets, like different uh, like currencies or the algorithmic stable coins. Well, the algorithmic ones, I just, um, it's a great idea, uh, to not have anything connected to the stable coin, like, nor like not the U S dollar and not USDC, to see, you know, anything else. Like it's a great idea, but I just think that right now, maybe from the tech side, we're just not ready for this. And it's probably not the best idea to even work on this at this point, since we are uh, in the bear market and people are trying to be really careful. So probably maybe like in three years or something, uh, they will come back and we're all like still traumatized from Luna, obviously. So I would much rather go to, um, yeah, the stable coins that are backed by assets, whether it would be crypto assets or fiat currency. And probably I would, even like stick to the uh, uh, to the first group, which is like by the that are backed by the fiat currency. So like USDC or BUSD, because those are um, heavily regulated. But once again, it's my personal opinion because I don't mm -hmm. mind the regulation, and I don't. Uh, I know that there are lots of people in crypto that want it to be completely decentralized, so they would uh, much rather have like a stable coin that's. Uh, not connected to any government or any bank or anything. But then once again, like, what do you value more? Do you value your privacy more or do you value the stability more? I would personally go for the stability. I personally think that the, the basket thing is a much better deal. For sure, um, yeah. Because we looked at, at, at look what just happened with Russia. Um, everyone was kind of angry at them. The United States said, hey, we're going to ruin you. Um, and we, we did. The United States crushed the Russian economy. It was done. Um, it was finished for like two weeks. And then, then Russia said, hey, we're going to sell our oil cheaper, but you have to buy it in rubles. And then all the rest of the country's like, well, that's a discount. And the United States is like, hey, you don't buy that oil and you don't do anything. And everybody was on board until Russia discounted the oil. And then everybody started buying rubles and it, it stabilized. So Everyone talks about the instability of crypto. At this time in the world, nation states are not too stable either, man. I know, right? No, so, nothing is stable. Yeah. And at any time, you know, uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of talk about Saudi Arabia joining the BRICS nations, which would really hurt the U.S. dollar. And then people yeah. would, wouldn't have to buy oil uh, settled in U.S. dollar anymore. 
And with it not being backed by gold, there's really not much backing it besides that. So it's a, it's a perilous time. So I think something that's connected to oil, gold, silver, you yeah. know, and euros and dollars, just a, a basket of stuff to where if something started to go down in value, like the U.S. dollar had high, really high inflation, you it would increase the basket in euros or increase the basket of gold. Whatever needed to happen um, to keep the valuation at that, what we consider $1, um, exactly, which I yeah. think that'll be the, the best time is when Bitcoin goes to zero because it's not valued against a dollar or any other fiat currency. When people start valuing gold and other things, as in how much Bitcoin is that worth, that'll be that'll be a great day. Um, or stable coins will be, you know, valued at, you know, 0. 0.1, 0. 0.0001 Bitcoin. Um, that'll be the best time. That'll be cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like the the gold, like the stable coins that are backed by gold, would be the absolute like it just it's just such a such an interesting idea for me that the uh, it's actually coming back. The trend for it right now is coming back. You can kind of see it everywhere, like everyone is talking about it, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been like really popular. I feel like in the past few years, but now it's like gradually coming back, and more and more people are getting interested in that. Yeah, there's one. It's a GSX. They actually. It's yeah. a really interesting project because they actually bought gold mines and mm -hmm. they, they mine the gold and and that's what uh so it, it can increase with value, but it has a floor because they have gold reserves. So it's it's an interesting idea too. Um as far as a, a stable uh a stable mm -hmm. crypto because it's backed by real hard assets. Um but yeah, I think I think a stable coin is backed by real what we've always considered money for all of humanity you know gold silver uh you know food crops yeah, kind of old oil. school <laughs> yeah i mean real you know real exchangeable goods um that's an interesting idea but also there's when you're when you when we're really talking stable coins there is a lot of uh baggage that comes with it you know when you look at tether and you look at you know BUSD because it, it's 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 a it's not a country it's a company, um, yeah. and then you have to have a certain level of transparency, you have to have you know a, a level of trust. So, and then also it's the chain, um, which you know which that's a, something to their their credit. Tether, I mean, you can be you can use Tron, you can use uh, Binance Smart Chain. You know, you can use uh, ERC-20. So it's very, very versatile when it comes to, to uh, what you can use it for. Um, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of history and baggage when it comes to Tether and a lot of things. Right. It, and also when it comes to these stable coins, they are, they are the absolute uh, um, competition when it comes to fiat money, when it comes to government money. So they are the biggest target, I think, when it comes to, uh, especially when CBTCs come out. It's like, oh, don't use these things. Use your, our CBDC. It's the same, basically, except it's ultra centralized, which people that you can definitely not trust. <laughs> Every government yeah. has done something terrible. Um, so I, I do use BUSD a lot because uh, I do a lot in DeFi um, on Binance Smart Chain. Um and I remember when uh, when Tron came out on, uh, they had their TUSD, and the, just the the gas was so much better. That was the mm -hmm. worst thing about moving Tether was the gas. Well, what, I mean, if, if Ethereum was high, you know, you, it would cost it would cost me like twenty dollars to send somebody, you know, thirty dollars. It was not yeah. worth. It. So uh, that's one of the best things. I think about BUSD is the the gas price is always is always low. Oh, it's always been low. Um, Ethereum has seemed to to be a little bit better. But what do you think about kind of the big picture when it comes to uh, to choosing a stablecoin? Well, what I love about it is that once again they're serving their own purpose, and like you said, Tether has a history. Like 
we all know it. It's still right now the most popular stable coin in the market and it has the largest volume and everything. But everyone kind of knows that it's probably you, not you say the there's most... There's a tether mafia. It's a, it's a real thing. Yeah, I know. Definitely it is. Yeah. But then, like, I just love it how people are aware of that. But they're saying, like, no, but if I'm just using Tether for, like, day-to-day -day transaction, it's, like, it's amazing. I'm not holding a million dollar in this. I'm just uh, this very convenient, fast, cheap, everything. So it's doing its purpose. Then if you want to do, like, long-term savings, then you just switch to USDC. And what's interesting is that whenever there is kind of, like, a fluctuation in the market, people are just, like, slowly starting to, you know, <laughs> just get all the... USDT and convert it into USDC. Mm. And here, what's interesting that USDC is actually very, very similar to BUSD. And you know how, like, a few uh, a few months ago, when uh, BUSDC started to like market itself and everything, people are starting to like get attention and uh, for that coin. And then uh, they just converted automatically all of the uh, USDC on Binance to BUS uh, BUSD, which was really interesting. And mm. the tether didn't get that so they didn't touch it because it like everyone just admits that there it's just serving a different purpose and it's not really a competitor like in that manner just really interesting i've had this a discussion recently and then a long time ago with uh, johnny bravo he's a big youtuber in the like tr more traditional finance um in stocks and stuff like that and he would always talk to me about being the crypto guy and he said you always want to talk about Tether and how he thinks that, and he's right, we have allowed uh, Tether to be a central bank. And we have, and it's all our fault. And we've built, we've built our crypto empire. We've built this thing that we're trying to, to have gotten away for us to get away from central banks and to fix things. And we've built so much on the foundation of Tether. If, if Tether does get attacked or if it goes down or if it, the Tether Mafia gets exposed or whatever, all of these exchanges are built around Tether, their, their foundation, yes. every trading pair. Everything is made from this central bank that we created, and it's so terrible, um, which is one of the good things about FTX going down. Um, it's, it's one of the – I think the thing that Binance did that I really, really like about – BNB and BUSD is they're like, hey, it's kind of like metaverses. This is our metaverse. This is our ecosystem. And we we have, or it's like a country. We have our currency. Here's what it's backed by. You know, we can we can be transparent and talk about you know what we have for value here. Um, and when you interact in this, you can use this, and then other other exchanges, other wallets they can recognize the sovereignty of that stable coin like BUSD. And then, cause you can put BUSD on your Exodus wallet. You can put it on your Monarch wallet. You can put it in crypto.com and then you can exchange it for whatever is there. Um, so it, it is kind of like creating another world of, and, and these are like sovereign, they're almost like countries when it comes to, and they issued a currency. Um, it's a very interesting, interesting thing to look at it that way. Yeah. But I think people are going to need to be more serious about their stable coin. Um, I think we do need more variety because what we have now, it's not, not the best, you know, but we're still at an, at an early stage, but we need to, uh, we need to recognize things for what they are. And we do need to call out stuff for, uh, we need to call out stuff when, when things aren't right. We do need to kind of sound that alarm as, as influencers and creators and just people in the space. And then those things need to be addressed and fixed. Yeah, but everyone is kind of like, I feel like everyone is afraid to say something. And then, you know, there's a lot of hate then if you're not right, if they're saying something, especially if it's accusing of something, if it's uh, something problematic, everyone is just trying to be extra careful and... Yeah, then we just like you said, we don't have like an honest and open space for that's all a, that's, the information. A, that's a to the toxicity there is, I think, in crypto. Yeah. If you go into a project and you're like, hey, I have a what about this? This looks weird. 
And they were like, quick spreading FUD, shut up, ban that guy. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, that was a, that was a legitimate question, man. Because um, I've done reviews on stuff. And I was like, hey, you know, I went to the, these, you know, the, the team's LinkedIn's and none of them have the projects on their LinkedIn's is a little, little weird. I mean, it's not like a huge thing, but it's, it's something that I, you know, noticed. Oh, yeah. And, and people, you know, they're like in their community, they're like, Hey, well, what's, and I'll even say, well, a lot of times people are working on this as a side project and they could get in trouble at their day job if they have that. And most of the time, that's usually what it is. But people will ask you know, in the community, it's like, Hey, that's kind of a legitimate question. You know, Frank, why don't you have this on your LinkedIn? And he's like, well, you know, I work for IBM. And if I do put that on there, I could get in trouble for, how you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so it's like, okay. But I think that's part of just like transparency that if you see something, you say, hey, that's, that looks a little weird. And then I think it stops FUD more than anything else. Yeah. But if you're in a community and you see someone ask a legitimate question and then you see the admin remove that question, that is more, I think, scary and, and pushes FUD more than just answering the question. Um, but I think, and I do think we need regulation when it comes to crypto. I do, just because people are terrible and they're going to try to do bad things to other people. Um, exactly. Which, and there is laws, but there needs to be, I got hacked and I had a bunch of money stolen. And this is years ago and I didn't know what to do. I, I, I'm like, I, if I call my police department, even if they send an officer out, what are they going to do? I would have to explain what it is for probably half an hour. And they're not going to know how to write it up. They're not going to know what, you know, they're not going to know how to investigate it. They're, so I felt really like powerless. So there needs to be, a, there's existing laws. I mean, I had money stolen from me, but, but the, the law enforcement was not set up to, to help me at all. Um, my, my ex, my uh, ex father-in-law, he was a the state trooper and he got called this one time out to this farm and this guy had uh, rattlesnakes, just pits full of like hundreds and hundreds of rattlesnakes. And he like got the venom and sold it for any venom to the medical community. So he had a valuation that these, you know, these snakes are worth. And he's like, yeah, somebody came in and stole 500 snakes from these pits, these two pits. And he was like, uh, he didn't know what to do. He's like, I don't know how to make write this up. He's like, well, it's like, you know, it's going to cost me like $30,000 worth of income. And I have to buy these snakes cost this much. But it, but, but it was, he was so confused. And that's, that's easier to wrap your head around than magic internet money, you know, for, yeah. for a cop, if you're calling it, someone stole my magic internet money. I mean, it's literally like someone stole my V bucks in Fortnite. What are you gonna do? They but it's but it's so interesting. Whenever something bad happens, we always want someone to come and protect us. Mm -hmm. So, like, here is and here is like the tricky question. You want to have all the freedom in the world, and you don't want anyone to like look at you or whatever you have. You don't want anyone to have power over what you have, unless something bad happens. But when something happens, you're like, no, 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 come look at this. Like, I don't mind you taking a look at this. Please, like, do some something about it because clearly somebody stole my money or this happened or uh, this company was, like, totally collapsed or a total scam, which I uh, which is an interesting point because what I really like about BUSD, uh, coming back to this uh, stablecoin, is that uh, actually their reserves are held in, like, segregated accounts so like if the company, uh, the taxes company uh, that's connected to the stable coin, if they go bankrupt, you will go ahead and like, you will get all of your money that you own, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like you're not, not gonna just sit there and like with your hands empty, you know? And that would be something interesting too. Like uh, in the United States, we have the FDIC so that your bank account's insured for like $100,000. And to have something like that, in crypto, um, which Korea passed a law, South Korea, not North Korea, they yeah, I'll passed guess. a lot of laws there, but <laughs> anyway, South Korea, this was probably three years ago, and there used to be, <clears throat> South Korea was huge in crypto, it was, it was like one of the biggest places, and there was tons of exchanges, and 
There's not now because South Korea passed this law that said that you had to insure up to a certain level people's funds. So that was very difficult, very expensive. So all these little exchanges had to go away because the government shut them down. But a lot of the bigger ones like Huobi and other ones, they they had to buy this insurance now to uh, to cover people's funds for up to a certain you know amount of money, like for the average person. So I do think there's room for for uh, for regulation in crypto. But like I said, there's already existing laws. Like if I steal something from you, that's against the law. But yeah. there needs to be that infrastructure where, you know, if you if someone steals your crypto, that they know what to do. It's like okay. You know, because if it's not, if it's theft, it's theft. If you send your three ETH to get five ETH back, that's not theft. That was not your keys, not your crypto, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're, you're an idiot. But if somebody mm -hmm. hacks into your non-custodial account, which is what happened with me, I'll say it was crypto.com. Someone went into my crypto.com and they took all my money. Um, and crypto.com told me, sorry. So... <laughs> There, oh. it, it, so there's nothing I, I could do on it, um, but it was it was a non-custodial wallet. It wasn't, you know, like I let somebody you know have it or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think. Uh, and then th there's always like USDC it, it was always like kind of the the golden boy of of stable coins, but True, then yeah. it's, so, it's so connected with Coinbase, so anything because there's that that level of centralization. You know, whenever there's a problem with anything connected to the center of it, it makes it shakes the foundation of you know the currency itself. Just yeah, like yeah. with countries, just like we were talking about with countries, whether it's Russia, United States, or or Europe, um, it it can affect the value of that currency. So, I think I think the basket thing is the way to go. I really I, I really do. Um, I think I think. Uh, I think you could do the basket thing with some kind of, you know, smart contractor al uh, algorithm that increased, you know, whatever assets, you know, were going up, decreased assets that are going down and kind of managed it uh, to where it kept that valuation and around, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that would be the, the best way it could be built. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's just very important to understand, like, once again, which table coin serves which purpose and mm -hmm. what are the risks, what are the benefits, what are you doing with this? Is this long term or short term? Like, what the picture is? And then, yeah, you know, but no, the, totally. The long term or short term thing, because you might not want to be in Tether, but you'll be in Tether to, you know, for a yeah. short term to to, to, to to utilize certain things. And that's another thing. Some, you know, some platforms are some things that you want to participate in. Um, with, you know, especially if it's in DeFi, you may have to, you know, utilize whatever their stable coin is um, yes. in order to, you know, to take part in it. Whether you think it's a really good opportunity and you could make a lot of money, you know, but then you've got to use the stable coin that you have never heard of. Um, oh, exactly. And, this is this is how I actually saw BUSD. I was like, uh, first that it came out, I was like, you guys are just bored. <laughs> are you just doing this for marketing? Yeah. But it is, it is good to have to have a choice, you know, um, mm -hmm. and it also, I think it also kind of forces uh, other projects and other stable coins to to work a little harder to make, you know, if because it's competition, and it's it's yeah. the best thing for for the consumer always is competition. Okay, anything else you wanted to, to talk about or hit on? We've been talking about half an um, hour. I mean, we've covered like the basics and the uh, how things are right now. I'm not sure yet. Do you think there is anything else? No, I think we, we covered a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, to hit the like button. Really appreciate that, guys. Also, leave a comment below if you uh, you know want us to have a talk again and talk about anything that we missed. Um, it was good having you on, Nolina. Thank you so much. Uh, look forward to having you on some other time and talking. You guys take yeah. care, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.